In this video, I'm going to be showing you the chilling truth about this winter. Be sure to watch till the end to see an updated winter forecast, what factors are involved, and even when you could see the coldest day of the year. But first, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button for more weather updates. So for the past several months, everyone was predicting a La Nina by summer or fall, and it would be going into a La Nina winter. But has it happened yet? What's going on? Here's a look at the current sea surface temperatures. Pay attention to this part of the tropical Pacific. And as you can see, over the past 30 days, things have really cooled down. And if this trend continues, we could finally see that weak La Nina that a lot of people have been predicting for several months. Over the past 90 days, they've actually gone up and down. Overall, they're in general cooling down, but what happened is we actually did go into sort of what would be weak La Nina sea surface temperatures for a couple weeks in September and then also again in October. But then things really dramatically warmed up in November. And now they're actually coming back down. And just yesterday we did finally reach below this half a degree La Nina threshold. And so we'll see what happens if it keeps cooling down then we will be in a weak La Nina. Now, if you look at the sea surface temperatures relative to the global average sea surface temperature anomaly, it kind of shows a different picture. This looks a lot more like a decent La Nina if you compare it to how warm other parts of the Pacific are. It looks significantly below average in this region. Now, the IRI forecast is really it's kind of on the edge of a cool neutral and a very minimal La Nina for the winter time frame the dynamical average is showing a, a very weak La Nina before things warm up in the spring of 2025 but the statistical average keeps it at a cool neutral just slightly warmer than what would be considered a La Nina the thing is with this forecast they've actually kept pushing it back further and further and weakening it down. And so we'll have to see if it actually ends up happening at all with this La Nina. Typically in a La Nina, what's gonna happen is that you have colder temperatures over Western Canada, the Northwestern US, even the Northern Rockies and the Northern Plains. And you have an active storm track along the polar jet stream that tends to be variable that tends to bring above average precipitation for the northwestern U.S. and the Ohio Valley with drier conditions across the south and the southwest and warmer across the south and the east. But this is going to be a weak La Nina if it even happens, and so the impacts are not necessarily going to be as consistent as this and could be a lot more variable. And if it doesn't happen at all, this is what usually happens in an Enzo neutral winter. The colder air is a lot further east across the Midwest and the, and the Great Lakes region, even the Northeastern US, the warmer temperatures expand a bit further north across the Western US. And then you have the subtropical jet stream that brings wetter conditions across the South. If this lines up with the polar jet stream, this can create some big snowstorms across the Eastern US. Historically in previous week La Nina events, usually it features the coldest Air is going to be, of course, across the northwestern U.S., the northern Rockies, and the northern plains. The warmest temperatures are, are going to happen across the east coast. In terms of precipitation with a weak La Nina, the east coast, the south, and the southeast tends to be pretty dry. And also the west coast tends to have below average precipitation. But you do have above average precipitation across parts of the northern Rockies like Idaho, Montana, Wyoming that area and slightly across the part of Michigan, really most of the US actually sees below average precipitation in a weak La Nina on average. This is just showing what has happened with previous weak La Nina events. Each event can be somewhat different, but then in an Enzo neutral, you notice the colder air is further east across the Northern Plains and also the Midwest. And then you have the warmest temperatures across the Western US, the Southwest, and also the southeast is where we would see the warmest temperatures during the winter. And then in terms of precipitation, the western U.S., especially California, really dry, well below average precipitation there. The southwest also looking below average for precipitation. 
and Texas and even the Southern Plains also looking at below average precipitation all across this region, but then above average precipitation for the Northwest, even the Northern Rockies, even more so than in a weak La Nina, and also above average precipitation for the South, the Southeast, and the East Coast, and also kind of the Great Lakes area included in there also. Here's where it gets interesting. Notice the sea surface temperatures across the west coast of North America are also below average. This is a negative PDO. It's actually a strongly negative PDO, or at least it was in November. This can have La Nina-like effects, especially for the western US, but this can tend to reinforce a La Nina or create La Nina-like conditions. So I, I think this could have a La Nina-like effect, even if even if we don't really officially go into a La Nina because technically for this to count as a, a La Nina event, apparently we would technically have to have sea surface temperatures below this La Nina threshold for three months. And it would have to line up with atmospheric conditions before it would actually be considered a La Nina event. We'll see if that ends up happening. But these are just a couple of the factors, the Enzo and the PDO are a couple of factors that influence the weather pattern throughout the winter. There are a whole bunch of other teleconnections that really have a direct impact on the weather pattern and the polar vortex during the winter, but those teleconnections, we can only predict those accurately only like a couple weeks out. And so we don't really have those, but we do have forecast models, starting with the CANSIPS. Uh, the, the CANSIPS model, after months of predicting a moderate to even a strong La Nina has finally given up and is now predicting an Enzo neutral winter and has actually changed the temperature pattern accordingly. So in terms of temperatures, the CANSEPS model, it shows pretty much the, the colder than average temperatures are gonna be across the Northern Plains, the Midwest and the Great Lakes region and even, even part of the Northeast. So this does resemble that Enzo neutral weather pattern with the warmer temperatures really expanding into the western U.S., most above average across the southwest. Just going to be cooked during this winter if, if that happens. And then in terms of precipitation, it's really looking dry for most of the U.S., which would be pretty bad, especially because a lot of the U.S. is in a drought right now. And if we have below average precipitation during the winter, that's not a good thing. It's looking below average, especially for California and the Southeast. According to this model, is most likely to see below average precipitation. And it's looking average for the northern part of the US, not really anywhere seeing above average precipitation. The NMME model is showing pretty much warm for most of the US except the Northwest and also the, the Midwest and the Great Lakes in the Northeast to be near average, but above average, especially for the Great Basin, the Southwest, the Four Corners region in Texas, you know, seeing significantly above average temperatures through the December through February. But then what happens really after December going towards, going towards February, I think it really changes and you have some cooler temperatures moving in towards the Northwest. This is more of like a La Nina event and the warmer temperatures shift a bit to the East across the South, especially on, on the NMME model. So that's interesting. That is more of a La Nina type setup. We'll see if that happens. And then the precipitation still looking significantly below average across California, the Southwest, and also Florida, especially Northern California. And then looking near average for the Northern part of the US and then slightly above average for Michigan. Part of this is just because this month is looking pretty dry. And so going into the January, February, March timeframe, above average precipitation for the Pacific Northwest and also for the Great Lakes, the Ohio Valley, and the Northeast, but still low average precipitation for Southern California, the Southwest, and even, even also the Gulf Coast and Florida. And then the CFS model showing warmer temperatures, especially across the Great Basin, Southwest, Texas, 
and even even the Gulf Coast really seeing the above average temperatures there with the near to below average temperatures across the far northern part of the US like uh, northern Montana even northern Minnesota and northern Wisconsin and even Maine and in terms of precipitation January February March same same kind of thing as with with the NMME model is showing it's pretty similar Pacific Northwest and the Northern Rockies seeing above average precipitation along with the same areas of the Great Lakes the Ohio Valley in the Northeast even extending a bit further south and this could end up turning into a significant severe weather area in the spring still very dry for for California and and also Florida and also the Southwest seeing below average precipitation too but based on all this information here's my updated 2024 2025 winter forecast uh, in terms of temperatures the pacific northwest the northern rockies the northern plains even the central plains the midwest the great lakes and the ohio valley are all probably going to see below average temperatures especially further north across eastern montana the dakotas Minnesota, Wisconsin, even Iowa and Michigan are pretty much going to see below average temperatures, even well below average temperatures in some locations. But then further south, a lot warmer temperatures are expected across the Great Basin, the Southwest, Southern California, Texas, the South, the Southeast, even the Mid Atlantic could see above average temperatures, but the areas most likely to see above average temperatures, of course, across the Southwest with well above average temperatures expected across Arizona, New Mexico, and Western Texas. In terms of precipitation, it's looking above average for the Northwest and also the Midwest, the Ohio Valley, especially seeing above average precipitation. Also Illinois, uh, Southern Wisconsin, Southern Michigan could see a higher chance of above average precipitation, but also the inland parts of the northeast also could see above average precipitation and then the areas expected to see below average precipitation california especially the further south you go and then the southwest and the southern plains and then especially texas is pretty likely to see below average precipitation and then you have of course the south and the southeast also looking below average there and the same areas that are seeing above average precipitation and below average temperatures are pretty much the places where you'd expect to see above average snowfall so in terms of snowfall it's looking of course above average across the northern part of the u.s like the northwest the northern rockies of course north dakota the midwest the, the great lakes region the ohio valley and the northeast the areas most likely to see above average snowfall would be the northwestern U.S., especially the Cascade Mountains and, of course, the Northern Rockies. And then, of course, the, the Great Lakes, areas around the Great Lakes, most likely to see above average snowfall. A lot of that is going to be lake effect snow. As that colder air comes down, you can have a lot of lake effect snow even without an actual winter storm there. And then also the more inland parts of the Northeast could also see above average snowfall. And then further south, you have below average snowfall, especially across the southwest, and especially around this Four Corners region where you will have warmer temperatures and below average precipitation will lead to below average snowfall. And also across the south, warmer temperatures are expected there. So there's the potential for below average snowfall. And then combining all of this, pretty much the Pacific Northwest, the coastal Pacific Northwest, like Western Washington, Western Oregon, it's probably gonna be cool and wet for the winter, uh, snowy across all the mountainous areas, the Rockies, the Cascades, the Sierra Nevada mountains, uh, and mild and dry across Northern California and the Great Basin area, especially Northern Nevada and Northwestern Utah, warm and dry across Southern California, the Southwest, Texas, the Gulf Coast, the Southeast, and then, of course, very cold, especially across the northern plains and portions of the Midwest. And then, of course, you're going to have lake effect snow across the Great Lakes. Winter storms to the south of this very cold area, across even portions of the central plains, going across Kansas, Missouri, even 
Illinois across to Ohio and West Virginia. And then to the south of that, you have variation. It could warm up and then you could have Arctic blasts. You could have drier conditions. You could have snowstorms, ice storms, just a lot of variation across this area. And then some storms across the south, even if to the south of this, you have below average precipitation. I think this area has the best chance of seeing storms and especially some, even potentially some severe weather as we go closer to spring. And then cool with average precipitation across like Virginia and North Carolina and this mid-Atlantic area. And then of course, nor'easters are expected across the Northeast. And now here's a look at, on average, when you'll usually see the coldest day of the year. Across the West Coast, the, the coldest day of the year tends to be mid to late December, and then around New Year's for the Rockies, and also portions of the Southwest. Early to mid-January across Montana and Texas and places that are just east of the Rockies. And then mid to late January across uh, the Northern Plains, the Midwest, and even like the Tennessee area. Notice how the further east you go, the later the coldest day of the year usually is, as late as the beginning of February for, for the Great Lakes in the Northeast. So yeah, that's... That's a look at the 2024-2025 winter forecast and what factors are involved and a look at when you typically see the coldest day of the year. Thanks for watching this video. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, share the video, comment below, and hit the subscribe button and ring the bell to receive notifications for more weather updates. Extreme Weather Zone, out.